Shalom family. So if you are a gardener, you know, or you're about to learn a little bit about the importance of that strong foundation. So when we're talking about the garden, we're talking about the soil. That's where we, you know, sow the seed. That's where it gets its nutrients. It develops its root system. It's firmly planted. It grows strong. It is able to bloom, to prosper, to yield fruit. And so we want the same thing in our herbal practice. But what people don't realize is just having soil is not enough. You have to have the right soil. There's all different types of soil. We have clay soil. We have sandy soil. You know, we have all different types of soil. And even looking further, you can see the different nutrient composition that it has. So there's different minerals that we need, that NPK, you know, that nitrogen, that um, phosphorus, that potassium. And to illustrate this is let's say you're growing some onions, for instance, and you got really good, you know, when you're growing something, you can have really good seed, uh, really good germination, like everything's going good. But when you finally, like you've seen it, it looks so wonderful. You maybe take off some of the onion tops. And then when you actually go, want to harvest it, the bulb was really small. It didn't really develop. And if you continuously keep trying, keep trying, and you notice this problem, it probably has to do with that missing nutrient, that missing some potassium. It doesn't have enough. It's not being fed properly so that it can't even develop properly. And so, like I said, just having that soil is not enough. Just sowing that seed is not enough. Even having good seed doesn't mean that you'll have the yield. There's other things that you have to look at. As herbalists, we talk all the time about getting to the root cause, right? We know that we don't really just want to work on the surface or just manage. We want to make sure that we have healing. But we say these things and then the things that we do are the total opposite or the things that we do are not going to bring to fruition what we say it is that we want. So maybe you've seen some people like this where every time you see them, they're trying like this new this new thing, whether it's put an apple cider vinegar in their water to try to lose weight. And the next time they got something else that they're using to try to boost their metabolism or whatever, but they never have any actual traction. And if this is like, if it seems like it's specifically talking about you, I'm not talking about anybody specific. Um, and it's not to call you out or, you know, to embarrass you or anything like that, but it's to encourage you to maybe rethink your approach. Other people, maybe you always see them have a bunch of supplements, but you never ever see them with a fruit or a vegetable. You never, when you go to the restaurant, they never order, you know, the salad or the healthy thing. But, you know, you, but they don't understand why they're not having that progress. Or people think they can just put herbs on top of a mess and call it blessed. And I just came up with that. I like that a lot. But that's what we a lot of times do. And so that's what I want to talk more about, why the foundation is important. People are all the time talking about detox or removing mucus. You know, you watch these videos, you hear these phrases, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's what I need. It's always piling on. Okay, yeah, that's the new thing I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to this new diet, whatever. There's always people that kind of just are to and fro, always trying different things and never getting anywhere. It reminds me of just the biblical account of walking around for 40, 40 years in the desert, never getting into the promised land. And it never clicks on why that actually is. And in this instance, what I'm talking about is because you're not even trying to clean up the foundation first. You're trying to just, you want to detox and remove some things, a few layers, so you can pack on the next layers. There's people who every time you see them or for weeks and weeks and weeks, they're detoxing. They're always detoxing. And it's like, when are you pouring in? What are you pouring in? Because then you wouldn't be needing to, have, to detox all the time. Or thinking that I can just do a detox after decades, years of doing whatever I wanted, neglecting my body, abusing my body, maybe. 
So that's, that's why I really kind of shift my focus in the last year of the things that I want to share, the things that I want to teach, because one of the things I've noticed is, you know, for as herbalists who share, who, you know, teach and want to share with others, it's important for people to hear the words that we're saying, of course, to see the things that we're doing, but also to really get a deeper look and for them, the person, to be able to hands-on learn and do for themselves. So it's not just enough to be here present every week listening to my videos or whatever. It's not good enough just to download all the, the free things that I always come out with, which are, you know, many. It's not just enough to just skim through and read all of the material, subscribe so you can hear all the, like I said, all the videos. It, it's much more than that. So we need to make sure that the foundation is right so that when we plant the seed, we will have an actual harvest. All right. So as I said, I shifted what I want to talk about. People have complained since the beginning about the way that I teach or the way that I share, wanting me to get to things quickly, um, wanting to just hear about herbs, um, not even not respecting the, the 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 way that I like to share and give and trying to, you know, force me to make different content or give answers that I've already explained why I don't. And so I I always teach from a perspective of you learning, each one teach one, but then go and do to be able to take action on what you've learned. And so I came out with the practitioner database. It's really uh, funny to me, the fact that, you know, I thought I would maybe make another book in years, didn't know what it would necessarily be. And actually I kind of, kind of loathed the thought of it. Like, oh, I don't feel like, like I just felt burnt out or tired about around it. And then while I was just in the kitchen, it was revealed to me that I was going to make the series. And so I went ahead and did it. And the reason why I did this is so that people could take the next step. People could take action. So they would have instructions, of course. They'd be able to pretty much like look over my shoulder if they, you know, if that in the book, but kind of look over my shoulder, see what I do, why I do it, explain why I do it. And then you go ahead and do it. You make your own systems, processes, all those different things. So whenever you're working with people, you understand not just scenario one, because you watched a video on um, detoxing and you learn one way to do it. But no, you actually know how to come up with your own programs. You know how to be flexible and to change it to each person. So you didn't just learn one concept. You learn maybe one, one uh, system or one method, but you know how to apply it to 10, 20, 100 people. So you have this knowledge that is going to transcend. And so that's what I want to share. Specifically, not the first book in the series, but the second book in the series, because we're talking about that foundation. And I wanted to share this because these are things that people, like I said, things that people are talking about all the time because we have so many things outside, right? So many things outside of ourselves that trying to get in that can harm us. We got all these pesticides and chemicals, even in our or in the organic food. We have all these different recalls that are going on, all these different new viruses and sicknesses roaming around. We have a lot of different things to be mindful of and to protect ourselves from. But instead of trying to protect and fortify, you know, we think of boost, like boost immunity, or um, we're thinking about doing cleanses, but not even doing it in a way that's going to yield actual long lasting results. So not just cleansing one time for three days, three days water fast, and then just going back to life as, as normal, but lifelong changes. So let me show you guys. This is book one. 
This is um, <clears throat> providing quality community care, book one, all about working with um, the public, working with people, making programs for them, um, working with different medications, supplements, all those different things, doing it safely. And how to put, you know, not only just make recipes, but make it into a program and system for them and giving that community care. So about the consultation, the things that you need to have, keeping your inventory, all of those different things. And then the second one is this one, a holistic approach to detoxing and immune issues. So as I said, detoxing immune system, those are things that you'll hear, especially in the herbal space. But the things that I'm about to share is things that you're not going to hear anywhere else because I really want you to be able to apply every single thing. Honestly, if you just come and digest the knowledge, to me, it's a waste of time. If you're not actually going to ever use it or apply it, what's the actual point? Time is the thing that we can't get back. We can't, you know, even though very rich, you can't purchase more of it. You never know when your time is going to be up. So, don't waste your time. It, you know, just don't waste your time. If you're going to sit and listen to this information, make sure you soak it all in and then you go and do the work. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to break down the components inside of here and how you apply them to be able to get progress. So no more of that going on a hamster wheel, going on a circus or um, circus, going in a circle that revolving door, no more of that, no more of no more progress. These years are going by quick. And it is proven that each year, I guess it's astronomy, each year, the days are getting shorter. And even in the Bible it talks about how the days will be very short. And if it wasn't, um, we, would, we would perish. But the days are getting shorter. Time is going by quicker. And so we have to be able to adapt to what's going on. All right, so let me go ahead and share all of this information and resources with you guys. All right, so what does deeply nourishing and nurturing our body actually look like? So the first thing, detox in the gut for a strong foundation of health. So now you're probably like, well, you just said detoxing was an answer. And indeed, it's not. It's just one piece of the puzzle. And when I'm talking about detoxing, I'm not just talking about just taking bitters or laxatives for a couple of days, you know, a week or whatever, and calling that a detox. There's much more that I focus on, and that's just one part of the piece. Next, fortifying the immune system needs to be a top priority. So learning how to protect yourself against Against actual illness is better than learning how to um, boost or get rid of, you know, like the antivirals and all of that. It's better to protect yourself first than to worry about trying to clean up the mess later. And also, I give a little dedicated focus on balancing different immune system imbalances because that's another thing. We think about the gut, which is very important, right? And that's like, you know, um, the foundation, the stomach is the earth, but the, uh, our immune system is very important as well. And then our lymphatic system, which is a part of our immune system is very important as well. All of these areas need to be in balance and all of these areas need to make sure that they're working optimally, but we tend to focus on the gut. And we, and maybe the immune system too, but not in the right way. When I talked about the immune system, not looking at it the right way, not looking at it from a proactive perspective. And then the lymphatic system is totally ignored. So we're making sure we take care of all of those different things. Also reclaiming balance and control over your own body. Have you ever felt like you were like a prisoner in your own body or like, you, you, your, your body is just holding you back. Like you, you want to do things or whatever, but your body is like rebelling or your body is giving you a hard time where you feel like maybe your body feels like it doesn't like you or is mad at you. That's not a way that you should feel. And then we also talk about things like addiction. 
and um, also recovering after organ removal. That's something um, that came later as a part of this book, and I really feel like it tied it together. And there's a lot I can say about that, but we'll wait till we get to that section. And then, of course, it goes beyond herbs, and that's the thing that I always want to. Uh, that's the thing I always want to say to really bring to focus. It really goes beyond herbs. So, detailed protocols, which is what you'll find inside of here. Self-assessments, which is what you'll find in here. Progress charts, which is what you'll find in here. All of those are really going to be important and really help you to get to actual progress healing. So here's just a quick view of the table of contents. And I'm going to go ahead, though. And actually, once I took a picture of this, it doesn't include, it doesn't actually include the organ removal. As I said, that, that came later. And it's just so amazing how everything always comes together. I know that that's this, the father actually giving me all this information. And I was like, oh, where do I do with this? Where do I put this? And he gave it to me while I was working on this. It, it needed to go in here. Even though I had a set amount of pages that I wanted each um, book to be, it, it ended up in here. All right, so let's break down the chapters that are included. So we have the gut digestive health protocol so this is as i said starting with the gut repairing it to balance equilibrium for our health and then we talk about the detox thing about um cleansing so that we can um make sure we have that clean slate we then also it's important which is not talking about everybody should not detox what should you do what should you use each day on day one through i walk you through each day but you actually want it um, eat different herbs all of that then you have a space where you can track your progress and you can also learn the warning signs because i was trying to make sure that i i give you all the information that you need so you know if okay this is what to look for and maybe you need to slow down or reassess or do different things like that safety is very important and so as i said actionable steps so as you're, as you're actually doing this, you can track your progress and then you have to outline so you can do that if you're working with clients and to be able to track their progress. So it's this practitioner database is for the practitioner to be able to help their community. So I'm giving you the information that can help you and assist you, your community and your legacy. Then we have our comprehensive parasite cleanse protocol. Okay, so we break down as I said, the top seven parasites and different specific associated herbs. So it's just not good enough to just say clove and garlic. Okay, what are you specifically, um, what specific parasite is it? What are the symptoms and all of those different things? Like how, um, how do you even get these parasites? We explain all of that. Then we also give you the information on all of those things, all right? Then we also have a heavy metal poisoning protocol as well. So that's going to be important, understanding the different heavy metals and how we get into contact with them again, specific for different uh, of different heavy metals. And then we have an assessment for you as well on this. Okay. I talked a little bit about the addiction and withdrawals. So a lot of times people say, oh, this herb is good for addiction or withdrawal. We get to the specifics. So I actually break down cigarettes, alcohol, recreational drugs, caffeine, and also sugar. All of those things that are very addicting, we break it down. So we're not just talking about addiction as one, you know, just as um, one big as the classified as, uh, is it a, I want to say, is it a disease or a mental, I don't want to say mental illness. I feel like that's the wrong word, um, but it is both, it's, it's something that is, um, uh, mental that's going on they said so we're looking at the individual triggers and making protocols on that and then of course with that um i talked about all of those different things but we have an addiction and recovery progress chart as well so you're being you're you're able to take all this information and go do then we have our organ removal protocol which you did see in the table of contents but it is in here. So the book is bigger, about 118 pages, I want to say. Um, and I'm not sure if that includes like 
the other part, so it may be a little bit longer. But anyway, 14 of the top procedures, specific herbs. And I'll also talk about not only that, the herbs. I mean, that's the thing that everybody always cares about. So, of course, it's there. But what I did was, if you see, I mean, if you remove this organ, where are you also going to see problems? What other problems could you have? So, knowing this, if you, for uh, whatever reason, or a person in your family, your community, whatever, is going to have this procedure, you can be proactive. You already know what could go wrong, you know, what, what, how the body can respond to it and where you'll see imbalances in the future. So what can you do? You can read up on that section and you'll know what to do, um, what areas you need to focus on, what herbs you need to maybe um, make into a protocol and make your own protocol. The thing that we did as well in this book is I made a section for you to like, so each section has like a page for you to have your own research on our um, herbs, additional herbs, and your own page for making a protocol. Again, all of that is really important. And so you could take my information, you make your own, you do additional research, you make your own protocol, and you have all of your own protocols here. So if you need to give it to somebody, you can do that. All right. Then we have eczema. So learning about, you know, why it's happening, the statistics, all of that, and then what you can do to mitigate eczema. And then we have a care diary as well. So you can monitor, you know, figure out what the tr actual triggers may be, all those different nuances. So again, we're really making this for not just information, but actual healing can come. Then we talk about the lymphatic system, as I talked about, and also what would you do for swollen lymph nodes or water retention, which is called edema, swelling. So we go through that, um, a protocol for that. And not only that, we also have a self-assessment on that. So you can see if maybe you have a imbalance or weakness in your lymphatic system. I didn't mention this, uh, but in the heavy metal poisoning, um, section, we also have this self-assessment as well. So you know where you actually stand as well. Okay. And what, what you, um, you know, maybe you didn't even realize that maybe you are, might have a chance of exposure and then maybe you need to go do testing. So that's really important. And then the other thing that I'm focusing on is teaching students more or less about how to rely on taking herbs internally, but then um, what about for the outside of the body? Because what people don't realize is sometimes people may not always want to take something internally. And sometimes people can't, depending on their level of health. And so sometimes they're, they're I mean, once you start working with people, there will be people who are on so many different medications. They have so many different things. And you just, and you really have to be flexible to be able to find something that works for them. So introduce, I'm um, talking about hot and cold therapy. So this is just one of the um, things that you can do that goes beyond just taking herbs for something. And then I talk about lupus as well. Okay. Um, very prevalent among black women. Um, so lupus is more prevalent among women. And of course, black women have a higher rate until we talk and, and have a protocol on lupus as well. All right. So now let's get into little previews of different things. As I talked about, the gut digestive health, understanding how to get your, um, not just detoxing, but also how to nurture your gut is really important. So I talk about, and you know, it's a little bit like tongue in cheek on some of this, but like how often should you even go into the bathroom? What should it look like? All of those things are important and understanding the gut brain connection, another important thing. Um, so I think that we kind of, we, we worry about the effects and we don't think about it. We don't think about things until we get a diagnosis a lot of times. And so I want people to even know, like, if you're not going regularly and you know, you'll, or, or if your bowel movements look like this, you, you may be, you know, you, you may think that everything's fine but that lets you know that there's room for improvement. Okay, so that's that foundation. 
as I talk about the detox, I have my elimination system in here. Breaks down um, all the things that you need to know, including meal ideas as well, and going through the different days. So day one through th- what day one through three, this day four, day five through six, seven through fourteen. And the way that I actually made it is, if you wanted to do like a whole month, you could. Um, so I share all of that information as well. But this is a very important part as well. And what you what are the symptoms that you may notice as you're doing this? Okay, then this is also the uh, Parasite Cleanse progress chart. So I even show you how you can and the different information that you want to track as well. Like I talked about, we have the progress chart as well for you. Also about the addiction and withdrawal, how we talk about all these different things and how you have a space to kind of track that recovery progress as well, which is really important because, I mean, that's that's no joke. You know, it is something that um, is very taxing on, on the body. And so you want to know, of course, what to expect and when to make changes. And so that's the important thing. A lot of times, you know, we may give someone something, but we don't talk to them about what what, you know, like what the experience might actually be like for them, what to expect, what's normal, what's not, when to contact. So that's really what I kind of showed in the first book. But also, that's what I show you in the different protocols that I have. All right. Um, the heavy metal um, poisoning protocol. And this is an example of the self-assessment that you can take as well. Really important um, in today's climate have to have a, so much of accumulation of all these different chemicals. So this is another form of detoxing as well. And then for the organ removal, as I talked about, there's 14 different ones. So gallbladder, the appendix, the kidneys, the spleen, the uterus, ovary, thyroid, um, colon, pancreas, lung removal, stomach, prostate, bladder, tonsils. Okay. All right. And then I talked about the hot and cold therapy. So and the way that I set up these chapters is it lets you know what you're actually going to learn, um, like what the different sections are. So you'll know, like, as I said, you know, all of the different organ removal protocols that are in there. You know, all of the different um, sections of the chapter. So you'll know, oh, OK, like for let's see, for instance, did I have the addiction? Yes. You can see a little bit here, like I, I have the important warners and disclaimers. I have a support organization and website section. So you'll know all the different things that are in there. If you are just flipping really fast and trying to get to herbs or whatever, but you can understand what how I've actually broken everything down. And then we have a recurring issues protocol. And I'm not sure if I talked about that. I might have skipped that. Um, but this is very critical too. If you notice that the same issues are always coming back, maybe seasonally, or they just come out of the blue, whatever. That's something that needs to be assessed. And that's something that needs to be addressed. So we give you all of the information that you need to be able to do that. These are the steps that you do to to work through and get through it. So this is the eczema care diary. Again, it's broken down like the other um, diaries or assessments, things like that, where I show you these are the things that you should actually be writing in giving you ideas of what you would actually want to take notes about. Okay. So that is that. That's actually the last one that I have to share with you guys. So I hope that this was really helpful to you, really opened your eyes to the importance of building that foundation and how it is much more than just, you know, doing a a fast or a cleanse for a couple of days. It really takes more than that. And we want to make sure that we don't just have soil, but we want to make sure we have the right soil. And we want to make sure that it has the right composition so that we can actually get the results, get the harvest that we are expecting. And so we won't be caught off guard when we go to harvest and we're like, okay, what happened? (laughs) Where's the rest of it? We won't be, we won't be like that. Um, So we have, we have to be proactive in our practice. And I, Hope that these materials will help you to be able to do that. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. And thank you for watching.